Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion G7 PEG II. Before we understand what this topic is all about, we have two important announcements. First is in reference to the National Scholarship Test. This is scheduled to be conducted on 3rd of July 2022. How do you register? Follow the link given in the description box. Give the necessary information and you would be able to win some attractive scholarships. The next announcement is in reference to the weekly current affairs explain session. As part of this explain session, our tomorrow's topic discussion would be Maharashtra's political crisis and anti-defection law. Please do tune in live on our YouTube channel from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. and this session will be handled by Sarmad Maharaj sir. So please do tune in from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. What are we discussing about? We are discussing about Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. We recently discussed about the G7 Summit. So US President Joe Biden along with G7 allies unveiled the ambitious Partnership Global Infrastructure and Investment. This is being seen as the G7's counter to China's multi-trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative. Before we understand what this PGII is all about, we have to understand a bit about the BRI as well. So what is this Belt and Road Initiative? China began the Belt and Road Initiative back in the year 2013 under its president Xi Jinping. It aims to revive the ancient trade routes crossing to and from China from Rome in Europe to East Asia. Under this, the Chinese government helping to provide loans to infrastructure projects to various countries and in many cases, Chinese companies were awarded contracts for carrying out the work. This helped China mark the footprints at the global level. So what is this Belt Road Initiative? This is an ambitious project of China to develop two new trade routes connecting China to the rest of the world. It aims to strengthen Beijing's economic leadership where it wants to bring up massive infrastructure development in other countries as well and connect China to many other countries using this initiative. Now the question is why did China even come up with that initiative? That is because of three major reasons. One is China's rivalry with United United States of America. We know for the fact that China has many allies of its own. At the same time, United States of America has its allies of its own. One of the allies of United States of America happened to be Singapore. So what exactly happens? When you consider where the trade of China passes through, you have one of the straits called as the Malacca Strait. It is through the Malacca Strait that majority of the Chinese goods also pass through it. So what could happen in the near future? If there are clashes, between United States of America and China, the Strait of Malacca could be blocked. Why? Because you also have its partner Singapore, which is along this Malacca Strait as well. So perceiving threat along this narrow Malacca Strait, China feels that it has to come up with other trade routes, which is why China has come up with what is called as alternative trade routes. So if you look into this particular map, there are two initiatives. One is the Belt Initiative. The other is the Road Initiative initiative where the belt initiative refers to those type of plants where the earlier land routes that China had is all being reinvigorated. So whenever we speak about the belt initiative, it is the land initiative. So basically trading routes connecting Europe and Asia along the land corridors is the belt initiative. Then we also have the road initiative which seeks to establish sea infrastructure as well. As part of the first objective China is creating new maritime infrastructure so that this choke point that we have in the form of Malacca state is not being used by those countries against China that's the first one the second objective is to provide alternative market what do we mean by it we know for the fact that China is a manufacturing hub it also has a huge population as well despite having huge population it also wants to venture into new areas so if it has to venture into new areas it also has to develop some goodwill as well. How is it going to develop the goodwill? Let's develop infrastructure in some other country. So on one side, it develops the infrastructure, provides them loans at a very
very low rate so that these countries also open up their market for the Chinese investments as well as for the Chinese markets as well. So alternative market beyond China is what they are looking at for which they are developing the infrastructure. The third is to stimulate economies of the country's central provinces. If you look into China, what happens? You have the eastern areas which are already developed. But the problem is the central provinces of China are not developed. These states or the provinces that China has also has to be developed as well. So in order to ensure that there is local support that is provided, in order to make sure that the products that are produced in these central provinces are also exported to multiple other countries, China is also investing in the form of BRI initiative so that all the products that are made in the central provinces are also exported to other countries which is why they have come up with the Belt and the Road Initiative where the Belt is to do with reinvigorating the historical land routes between China, Asia and Europe and when we look into the Road Initiative it is about establishing new sea trade infrastructure. However, there are potential bottlenecks to this particular initiative. What are the issues? One, when you look at China, China is not transparent enough. All its affairs happen on an opaque basis and when you speak about China, it is not granting an aid, it is not giving something which is free of cost but it is giving in the form of loans and once it gives the loans we also know for the fact that these countries will have to pay back for example Sri Lanka has to pay back, Pakistan also has to pay back so what they are giving is low interest loans since these countries in case they are not able to pay back the loans they have to give away certain areas in the form of lease agreements as well. One such example that we have in Sri Lanka is the Hamban Tota port. So what is happening here? There is opaqueness and multiple countries have also criticized as well. This has been the major problem with the BRI. In order to overcome all these issues, in order to compete against the BRI, the G7 have come up with an initiative which is called as the PGII. So we have the President of United States of America who says that the nations of G7 have launched the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. Collectively, we aim to mobilize nearly 600 billion from the G7 by 2027 to invest in critical infrastructure that improves lives and delivers real gains for all people. Earlier in 2021, we also had this summit that was conducted in United Kingdom. They had already come up with a proposal called as the Build Back Better World B3W Framework. What does the B3 stand for it stands for build back better and w stands for world and this was a framework that they had created back in the year 2021 so they had already created a framework but now what are they doing they are reinitiating the same framework with another name called as the partnership for global infrastructure and investment basically to counter the bra initiative of the chinese so what is this initiative all about this is an initiative launched by the G7 countries where they basically want to make sure infrastructure development takes place in all the low-income countries. The stated purpose of the PGII is to help secure funding for countries to build critical infrastructure such as roads, ports, bridges, communication setups, etc. to enhance global trade and cooperation. However, the G7 say that this initiative is meant to be transparent, focused on building climate change resilient infrastructure and help in achieving objectives of gender equality and health infrastructure development. So this is based on four important pillars. One is to do with building the infrastructure which is climate change resilient infrastructure. So what does this mean? This means that if they are building any of the infrastructural project in any low or the middle income countries that infrastructure should be able to tackle the climate crisis and also ensure global energy security through clean energy supply chains that is the first pillar the second pillar is on focusing on some of the information and the communication technology let's say for example the 5g the 6g internet connectivity cyber security while these countries also have clash with china as well they also had clash with Huawei which happens to be a company from China 
they have an apprehension that the Huawei, which is already developing 5G technology, is taking some information and giving it to the Communist Party of China. As a result, they also say that we have to develop digital information and communication. So we are going to create this infrastructure in the low and the medium income countries. Third is to do with gender equality and this is to do with equity as well. And finally, what we are going to build and upgrade is the global health infrastructure because we did suffer the crisis during the COVID-19. Countries should not suffer in the near future. So we will be making sure that health infrastructure is also developed are the four pillars of this initiative. But do note, this will not be charity or aid, but instead it will be loans as well. These loans will be charged at very less interest rate as this will be beneficial for the country which is taking the loan as well as for the country which is giving the loan as well. Now the question is, where are these funds being directed under the plan? So as of now, in India, the US International Development Finance Corporation, the development bank of the country, will invest up to $30 million in the Omnicore Agritech and Climate Sustainability Fund, described as an impact venture capital fund that invests in entrepreneurs building the future of agriculture food systems, climate and rural economy as per the statement of the White House. The fund will invest in the companies that increase food security, promote both climate resilience and climate adaptation in India as well as improve the profitability agriculture productivity of smallholder farms. Apart from this, the US International Development Finance Corporation along with G7 nations and EU are dispersing a $3.3 million technical assistance grant to build a vaccine facility in Senegal having a potential early, yearly capacity of manufacturing millions of doses of COVID-19 and other vaccines. European Commission's Global Gateway Initiative is also undertaking projects supporting the PGII such as mRNA vaccine plants in Latin America and a fiber optic cable linking Europe to Latin America among others. These are some of the examples as to where they have already invested. Similarly, in the near future, they will be investing more in India, West Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, so on and so forth. These are just the examples of where they would be investing in the near future. They will open up these windows of opportunities to more countries as well. Now, the question is what is the difference between BRI as well as the PGII? BRI is an initiative of China. PGII is an initiative of G7 countries coming together. So what are the differences? PGII has laid focus on climate action and clean energy while China has built large coal-fired plants under BRI along with solar, hydro and wind energy projects. So these countries of G7 have clearly said that in case they are building any infrastructure that should be able to mitigate the impact of climate change crisis and ultimately we are going to invest in such projects which will help in mitigating the climate change issues. So this will be clean energy according to PGII but when it comes to the BRA they have already invested in lot of projects which are even including coal fired plants as well. When it comes to G7, they have pledged about $600 billion, Morgan and Stanley estimate that China's overall funding for BRI by that time could reach $1.2 to $1.3 trillion with actual funding being higher. When you consider the finances, the BRI is investing far in excess when it comes to the G7 initiative of PGII. Added to it, when it comes to the PGII, since these are the democracies, these are the countries coming together, large-scale private capital will be mobilized. But when it comes to China's BRI, it is majorly state-funded. We know for the fact that most of the activities in China happen via the state control. So it is the state which is investing a lot of funds under BRI. But when it comes to PGII, large scale capital is from the private sector. While G7 leaders emphasized on transparency, when it comes to all these PGII projects, we also discussed that BRI is known for its opaqueness and not so transparent policies. In fact, majority of the countries have also criticized this move as well. What has been the response of China with respect to the PGII announcement? China says it continues to welcome all initiatives to promote global infrastructure. However, if there is any question of geopolitical calculations, 
we would oppose it says china is there any overlap between bri as well as the pgii we have the seven countries in g7 so one of the country happens to be italy italy also became the first g7 member to be part of the bri back in the year 2019 while united states of america has been the country which is critical of bri other countries of g7 have also given mixed reactions as well when you consider germany and france they are not directly participating in the bri but have partnered with china in building rail networks other projects for connectivity we do not know what is the status of this project as of now how it will be implemented in the near future but then there is an issue with respect to the overlap which we have to wait and watch how it will be addressed in the near future it is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best